Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. If I sound rough as fuck and you haven't seen one of these videos already before, you'll notice that on this day of recording, I have a rotten cold. Fortunately, not the worst kind that's going around in savages in the world at the moment, but just a bog standard cold. For that reason, you may also see me looking down a little bit at my notes. That's just to try and keep my mind clear because it is foggy as all hell. Um, I'm also recording this in my workplace, so if you see any, uh, see any, hear any loud crazy noises, it's probably people just banging indoors and walking around. Fortunately, there aren't too many people in the office, so I'm trying to take advantage of that. Rather than recording my home set, which is guaranteed to be interrupted, um, which is why we don't do too many of these discussion videos. Given the fact that we don't really have a format to play in at the moment, though, I'm going to try some more of these out. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them, even if it does involve me just waffling a little bit, which is something that I'm pretty good at from uh, my experience. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys today about Salamangre and what space they have in this new master rule and how things change for them. Well, the truth is that not much does change for them. Um, they rely almost entirely on links, as we've seen. The one important card that they used really outside of those links was Mirage Stalio. Uh, that's now gone, uh, which was a bit of a weird one, but there you go. So the question is, is how, how are they changed going into this format? Well, I don't think it changes much. Uh, I think much like Sky Striker, they've got a bit of a cult following and they're also really, really good at the same sort of things, which is generating uh, some amount of advantage, making small, consistent plays and boards and just keeping that going along. The people who are usually piloting Salaman Great are usually pretty strong players. So usually we're going to see those one or two good results come through. Now, are they in the top deck? Certainly not anymore. Uh, I think they've lost a lot of strength in that regard. Um, I definitely don't think they're the kind of deck that anyone can just pick up anymore and play well. Um, so really, you're going to see just a very few small pilots that will get tops and things with this deck. But the overall representation won't be good, especially not at the top end of the table. Now, there is also a ton of indirect support in terms of Cyburst, and that seems to continue to be the way and will continue to be the way going forward. People are also digging up slightly older techs that we're seeing. Uh, what's the one that came in the game? Micro code something or another. That guy, anyway. We're seeing that, seeing some play uh, doing particularly well. We're seeing Prohibit Snake and things like that creeping in as, as a tech choice. Um, so people are still experimenting with this stuff and expect it definitely to continue to be experimented with. Also, having Pot Virus at 3, potentially quite an interesting interaction there, given that they can turbo through links. Usually, they're shuffling them back with some of the in-grave effects, but it does give them another way to go about their plays. Shuffling back lots of your extra deck cards, with ones that, especially when you're turboing through them, and then destroying two from the main deck is a real nice touch. And whether that will see play or not, who knows? Um, I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong out there. And if you play the deck, I'm sure you will. Um, but just something to think about. It can still make going second a strong option too. It has strong first boards. Of course, that consistent small package, less consistent than it was, but still pretty consistent overall. And of course, going second, because it can run so many hand traps, it can play going either way. That is one of the downsides to the deck though, because it runs so many hand traps, of course it can trip you up occasionally in terms of bricking going first. But I do think overall, it's probably in quite a strong position if it has a strong pilot. Uh, I do think it's a relatively hard to play deck uh, compared to what it was before, which is where anyone can pick it up and just helmet their way through. I think now you need to be really, really resource conscious, but it can keep generating those as long as you know how to play the deck. This is just a short and snappy one, guys. I just thought I'd share some of these thoughts with you. And I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about how the deck will do in the new Master Rule. Do you think it's just straight trash like a lot of people will think? Uh, is the deck worth playing anymore? Or maybe you've got some secret source, maybe you discovered something that's a little bit spicy that you think is going to do well. Do you think we'll still see it represented at the top end of the tables? Thank you very much for checking in, guys. Uh, hopefully this de uh, deck, this video, fuck my life, I'm still fucked up by this cold. Hopefully this video has provided you a small section of entertainment in your otherwise dreary days sat at home watching Disney+, Plus. because let's be honest, that's probably what you're doing right now. Um, and yeah, hopefully it, it gives you somewhat some other kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! related entertainment or something.
If you guys haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.